Okay, in this video, we're going to be using Newton's second law again to answer some questions, but this time, instead of just finding the acceleration, we're going to take an extra step and use that acceleration to continue on and solve a five equations of motion problem. A 10, mil a 10 meter long rope can hold a maximum weight of 100 kilograms. What's the fastest a person could climb up the rope without breaking it? So here's the rope and it could hold 100 kilograms up. What that means then is if that was what was happening, the rope would be supplying a force of tension to match the force of gravity on the 100 kilogram object. Here we're going to use our simplified um, gravitational um, formula. We don't know that this 1000 kilogram object is on Earth, but I think it's safe to assume. So what that means then is for the rope to be able to hold up that 1,000 kilogram object, it must be able to supply a 9,800 Newton force in the upward direction. So what that means then is if the 60 kilogram person is going to try to accelerate upwards using the rope as fast as possible, the biggest force of tension that that rope can support is still 9,800 newtons. So they can't pull on that rope any harder than that or else they'll break it. The force of gravity acting on this person would be uh, 588 newtons. Oops, that was a 100 kilogram person. Careful there. 100 kilogram which means a 980 newton force, not 9,800. Oops. Um, so I just had to take one zero to that. I, I accidentally made this 1,000 kilograms, but it's only 100 kilograms. So, oops, there we go. 9.8 times 100 is 980 newtons. The force tension could be 980 newtons, and the force tension could be 980 newtons. So again, when this person is climbing up the rope, they're going to be off the ground, so they won't have any normal force to support their weight. So 9.8 newtons per kilogram times their 60 kilogram mass gives us the force of gravity that would be acting on them, 588 newtons, negative because it's down. That means that the net force, sorry, it's up there, F net is going to be 980 newtons plus the negative 588 newtons. Or 392 newtons, obviously up. Now F net equals MA. So that 392 newtons is equal to 60 kilograms times A. Divide both sides by 60. And my acceleration is going to be equal to 392 divided by 60. It's negative 6.533. Sorry, not negative, positive. Meters per second squared. So, again, to review to this point, a 10 meter long can hold, rope can hold 100 kilograms. How fast could a 60 kilogram person climb up the rope. So if it can hold 100, that means it can hold 980 newtons. If that's how much it can hold, then this is the biggest net force that you can experience, and as a result, the biggest acceleration you can experience. Now assuming our climber has to start from rest on the ground and travel the distance of 10 meters, we have enough kinematics information to find whatever other variable we're being asked for. In this case, it says the fast distance, so we assume we're looking for the time. Uh, all the way back to the last unit, and for those of you that are asking, yes, you can use the uh, formula sheet on the test when we get to this point, but that should be a displacement of 10 meters, whatever. The displacement is equal to V1T plus 1 half AT squared. That's one of our five equations of motion all from all the way back in unit one. So 10 meters is equal to that whole term goes to zero because of the zero speed plus one half 
three meters per second squared t squared. So 6.533 divided by two works out to 3.3, nah, 3.27. 3.27 meters per second squared. If I divide both sides by 3.27 meters per second squared, then my t squared works out to 3.06 seconds, square rooting both sides, and I get a t of 1.74 seconds. Again, when I square root, I get a positive and a negative root, but since this is time and we're assuming that time is moving forward, we're going to use the positive root of t equals 1.74 seconds. A quick review here. If it can support that much weight, it must be able to supply that force. If it can supply that force, it can supply that net force, leading to that acceleration. That's how fast you accelerate. That's how long it takes you to cover the 10 minutes. 10 meters, I'm sorry. A two kilogram bucket is being lowered into a 20 meter deep well. The string being used to lower the bucket supplies a tensile force of 15 newtons. Determine how long it will take the bucket, assuming the bucket starts from rest. So here's your bucket, two kilograms a 15 newton force, a tensile force, so that's the string pulling up on the bucket, 15 newtons. There's a force of gravity acting on that bucket. We can use our simplified force of gravity formula here. Assuming the bucket's on Earth. And what we can see is that the tensile force is keeping this bucket from free falling. It's keeping it from dropping to the bottom of the well at a rate that might break the bucket. But it's not enough to pull the bucket up. It's still accelerating down. The net force here then is the sum of those two forces. And having gotten the net force, we can get acceleration. So if that if you don't pull up hard enough and the bucket continues to accelerate down with that net force, then that's the resulting acceleration down 2.3 meters per second squared. We're assuming again, it says right in the question, that the initial velocity is zero. And it says that the well, if we go back up to the question here, is 20 meters deep. So that means that when the bucket displaces to the bottom of the well, it will displace through a distance of negative 20 meters. So what does it want to know? How long will it take to lower the bucket? So it wants to know T again. So having the acceleration, we now have enough kinematics information to solve this problem. Dividing both sides by that negative 1.15. 20, 20 divided by 1.15. I get 17.4 seconds. T squared, second squared. Square rooting both sides. 
So it would take 4.2 seconds to get that bucket to the bottom of the well. Or really, you've made it take 4.2 seconds to get the bucket to the bottom of the well so that the bucket doesn't go too fast and break when it hits the bottom. All right, last thing here. Um, well, it's this isn't really a thing. This is just, I don't know if you've recognized at this point, but what we seem to be doing in this question is the first thing we do is we get all the forces. Using those forces, we can get the net force. Using the net force, we can get the acceleration, and then we use the five equations of motion. So this is the general pattern. All these questions are sort of the same. You get a bunch of forces, get a net force, use that net force, get an acceleration. This is called dynamics because that's the study of forces, and this is called kinematics where we carefully describe motion. And what we're going to see here is that Newton's second law serves as the connection between the two things. So we have our five equations of motion and a bunch of other stuff that's sitting over here from the last couple units. Uh, not quite yet, but soon in this unit we're going to be flushing out some more dynamics information about how to get, how to figure out what the forces are acting on objects and stuff like that. So there you go.